you know what we mean if we say that two vectors are orthogonal. They are perpendicular to each other. We have seen that we can use the inner product to check whether two vectors are orthogonal or not. You may remember that we used this ID to compute the projection of a vector on a line. Think for example of the components of a force. We com compute in 2D the components of the force along the line and orthogonal to the line. But we live in 3D. How can we compute the projection of a vector on a plane? For this, we need orthogonal sets of vectors. Let us see what those are in this video. We take an, as an example a set S of three vectors, V1, V2 and V3. An orthogonal set is a set such as any vector is orthogonal to all the other vectors of the set. So that means in this case that V1 has to be orthogonal to V2 and V3, V2 has to be orthogonal to V1 and V3, and V3 has to be orthogonal to V1 and V2. But, wait a minute, this real inner product is symmetric. That means that if V1 and V2 equals zero, that we automatically know that V2 and V1 also equal zero. So if we want to check whether S is orthogonal or not, we do not have to check this one because this is already satisfied as that one is satisfied. So let's skip this one. If we know V1 and V3 equals zero, then we also know that V3 and V1 equals zero. So no need to check that one. And then finally, if we know V2 and V3 equals zero, and we also know V3 and V2 equals zero. So no need to check this one either. So for a set of three vectors, we only have to check three relations. Well, if the sets become larger with four or five, six vectors, then the procedure goes the same, but the amount of relations you have to check quickly grows. So let us stick to two sets of three vectors. First, we take a look at S1 and then at S2 as a second example. Well, for S1 it's very easy to see that the set is orthogonal because you can see straight away what the inner products are between 1 and 3, 0, between 1 and 3, 0, and 2 and 3, 0. They are all 0, so you see immediately that S1 is an orthogonal set. For S2 we have to look a bit better. Uh, because there are lots more numbers in the vectors. Take the inner product between V1 and V2, we get 0 plus 1 minus 1. 0 plus 1 minus 1 equals 0. Okay, that's fine. Between 1 and 3, we get minus 2 plus 1 plus 1. Minus 2 plus 1 plus 1 equals 0 as well, over here. Between V2 and V3, we get 0 plus 1 minus 1 equals 0 as well. So S2 is an orthogonal set. Now we can also have even more special sets, so-called orthonormal sets. So what's an orthonormal set? Well, S is an orthonormal set if S is orthogonal. So any orthonormal set is also an orthogonal set. But you need a second condition in order for a set to be orthonormal. The length of all factors has to be one. So for orthonormal sets, you do not only have that they are orthogonal, but also the length of the vectors needs to be one. Let's see at S1 and S2. We see that the length of all members of S1 are one. So S1 is an orthonormal set. And let's take a look at S2. The length of the first factor equals 4 plus 1 plus 1, 6. So the length equals the square root of 6. It is not 1. So we see that S2 is not an orthonormal set. However, if you have an orthogonal set, you can always turn it into an orthonormal set. 
as follows. Look at V1. If the length of V1 squared equals 4 plus 1 plus 1, it was 6. So we can normalize the factor V1, turn it into a unit factor, U1, by dividing by its length. So here we have uh, U1, V1 divided by its length, and now U1 has length 1. We can do the same with V2 and V3. We can make, make a new set consisting of U1, U2 and U3. If I change the length of a vector, it doesn't matter for the fact whether they are orthogonal or not. These vectors are orthogonal. If I would make this vector longer, then it's still orthogonal to this one. So it's still an orthogonal set. But now also all lengths of the vectors are one. Well, as you see, the vectors do not look really nice anymore. There's all those square roots floating around. So sometimes in some formulas, orthonormal sets uh, uh, are much more nicer to use. However, you pay a price because orthonormal sets look much more ugly than just orthogonal sets. So it depends a bit on the particular problem, which one is best to use.